I'm going to start with the Times Ireland edition. Uh, Klein and Haley, part of Japan plans. So Mike Haley, despite the fact that he didn't have a very good end to the season, um, was fairly heavily criticised for not being able to take the ball in the air in the Saracens game, has made the Ireland World Cup extended squad. Um, obviously this is a training squad and it'll be cut down to the travelling party uh, in August, but it's a 44-man pre-World Cup training squad and he's the, the big surprise, I suppose. It had been widely flagged, certainly on this show anyway, by Alan Quinn and that John Klein was going to be in it. Klein will become eligible to play for Ireland under the residency rules, having lived here for three years in uh, August. The other picture there is Maurizio Sarri throwing his hat at it and uh, storming off. Uh, he's pictured with assistant Marco Iani throwing his cap in frustration during the training session because Gonzalo Higuain and David Luiz had a bit of a scrap. Yeah, obviously the, there are different versions of what happened there. I, I don't think there's, I, from my understanding, I wouldn't think there's that much to it. He's, he's probably a, quite a typical Italian character in terms of his uh, histrionics and the way he behaves. Um, he seems to be a proper, proper football coach. I doubt there's too much to it. Um, I think seemingly uh, Higuain went in a little bit late maybe on Luis and Luis reacted, but um, just on the times, it's very sad to see that paper is on the way out. Um, you know, it was strange that it's, kind of came into the market at a time when papers seem to be in terminal decline, but it's been, I think, the, the, the stable in general has done excellent work in terms of Irish football, and that paper has a lot of quality, and it's sad to see it go. Yeah, no, for sure, the uh, sports section has always been really good. Mm, like, the likes of Gary Doyle, and, you know, Shane Keegan's gone in there doing, um, he's done a, a weekly piece, obviously running er, early um, sports editor. Um, it's, it's, it's sad that um, these people now have to look to find new jobs because a lot of talent is really talented work on out there. And I thought when their subscriptions were doing very well post um, the FAI revelations in, in the, the Times Online that um, things were looking up. So um, I've obviously done work for the paper myself, but I've, I've had huge time for them. I thought they were great to work for and always very readable in sports. Tommy Conlon as well, people like that, just plenty to read. Yeah, we wish them all the best. What have you got for us? Yeah, so Lohan hits out. This is the, uh, the Irish Daily Mail. Um, obviously, Brian Lohan, proper Clare legend, he's hit out at Davy Fitzgerald's uh, behaviour at the weekend. Um, and obviously then we have uh, South African client uh, Parsons Iron Squad. Um, Banner legend hammers Fitz over his antics. And uh, the aforementioned Tommy Conlon actually had a piece, in, I think in yesterday's Times, I read it online, so I, I could be wrong, but I think it was yesterday's. Um, about uh, Davy's nonsense on the sideline, I think at this stage he's it's just becoming a bit tiring. Ravy Fitz was the headline on Davey the. Ravy uh, Fitz, I like that. <laughs> pretty good, wasn't it? There's uh, Davy Fitz at the weekend um, getting sent to the stands. It looks like he's not going to be banned. Yeah. The, the referee's report is going to be actually maybe maybe he was being penalised for being Davy as opposed to for anything he actually did. So uh, there's, there's, there's a for once there's two sides to this story. Yeah, but uh, I think that the bottom line is to, you know, the, the treatment of officials in Gaelic games has been a massive, massive issue and um, they deserve to be defended to the hilt by the authorities, I think, and, um, you know, I remember this from being a kid, underage, like the abuse referees were getting oh, under, yeah. under 14 games, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mainly from parents yeah. or, um, or, or, or coaches, coaches yeah. who are, are both. Yeah. Um, and you know, at the time, uh, I used to think it was kind of hilarious. And uh, you know, you'd have you'd have the fell on the line trying to keep the coach um, the other side of the white line when he was encroached, like maybe ten yards over the line, and he could have been, um, you know, roaring at the referee as well. But um, the more you think about it, who'd be a referee? Yeah, I mean, you know? it's mad. I can't understand how they get anybody to referee those games. And it's also extreme. It's an extremely difficult game to referee. I think um, both hurling and particularly Gaelic football, the, like the the tackle is obviously very very on the line. Yeah. Um, and I don't don't believe it pays all that well either, you know. So, but I think they need to. I, I don't like that nonsense from Davy at all. It is mad how the referees get paid, isn't it? Mm. In the amateur and everything is volunteer, except the referee, because we appreciate the fact this guy needs to get paid, because otherwise no one's going to do it. Well, of course, nobody gets paid in Gaelic games. Do the referees not get paid? Nobody apart from referees. Yeah. Nobody else. Well, okay. Nobody else. Okay, okay. Uh, loads of people get paid, obviously. Um, all the full-time officials who work for the organisation and uh, all the managers who are taking payments under the counter. <laughs> that, that, that's Doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, okay, Emery takes club inspiration. Arsenal boss using Liverpool as a template to become a European heavy hitter. Um, so Unai Emery is looking at... Uh, Liverpool th saying I want a bit of that. O'Brien Cup KO, a massive loss. Jacob Stockdale reckons that um, not having Sean O'Brien in the World Cup is a massive loss. And some of Davies' antics aren't great. Former Clare star Lowen. So this, uh, these comments from Brian Lowen are pretty interesting. We put some of them to, um, um, to Tommy in a little while. I don't know if it's genuine passion. We're all passionate about the game, but we don't... We show it in different ways, so, uh, you know, 
He has the way he does things and people have to kind of fit into that. But I think some of the antics, they're not great. Yeah, I think I think with Wexford as well, it's uh, D Davy and Mourinho have comparisons. I think in that they, after maybe three years, they probably run out in terms of effect. That um, I remember speaking to one of the Wexford players this year, and he was kind of he had a feeling that it was a bit of a now or never year for them in general. Um, and in fairness to them at Pierce Stadium. After Davies' histrionics, things did improve. I don't know if the, if the two were related, but... Um, it's not the first time that that's happened. No, you can see him with the tip lads a few years ago as well, having a, having a scrap on the pitch. Like I, I just think it's nonsense, really. But uh, the star, um, Sari, kicks off, and they have a photo of uh, the two relevant players um, actually training, but it doesn't look like there's much going on there. And Klopp's never been better. Jurgen Klopp says he has never uh, had a better chance of winning Champions League. And please, the Liverpool side are the best he has taken to a final. And obviously, more Brian Lowen. Yeah, so the front of the Examiner Sports section this morning is uh, Matt Hatter. Sarri walks off in fury as Chelsea players clash ahead of Arsenal battle. And the picture of John Kiley on the top is can do better. John Kiley says Limerick must improve in every department against Waterford. Um, the Waterford have a kick at them when, again we asked this of um, Tommy in a little while uh, Kieran Shannon's writing about Steph Curry Steph Curry doesn't have to be a finals MVP to be invaluable saying that he's currently the best player in uh, basketball O'Brien and Levy will be sorely missed by Schmidt as World Cup nears yeah I think that um, losing O'Brien and Levy is um, uh, actually a fatal blow to Ireland's hopes of getting past a World Cup quarterfinal to be honest I don't really? think really yeah I think that like the your, all of your eggs are in the Josh van der Fleer basket mm. and actually having somebody to come off the bench for the last 20 minutes who is Dan Levy or Sean O'Brien or Josh van der Fleer is game changing and it's just I don't know we, we're, we're talking very fine lines where ne nearly everything will need to go right anyway for yeah so think. like a 19-16 game in our favour yeah. and it becomes a 16-10 game yeah. it's like what can you do um, the the mirror back page is effectively just the stories that we've mentioned anyway. Interesting one here in inside though. Kenny Rubbish's special treatment claim. Republic were an under twenty one one manager. Um, Stephen Kenny insists Creven Keller isn't getting special treatment compared to domestic players. And um, this is ahead of the Toulon tournament. And there's interesting stuff in the papers about this. Uh, I think it's in particular the Sun, which I can actually go to now because uh, the Sun has really good League of Ireland coverage in today. Lots of good stories. Um, Sari ball at the last. Uh, Unai backs checkmate as well. That's ahead of the final. And FIFA won't step in in terms of sorting the FEI mess. But um, the, the Kenny stuff is interesting in that he was forced to defend uh, bringing League of Ireland players away from their clubs for what is effectively seen as a friendly tournament in Toulon, which starts next week. I don't. I'm with Stephen Kenny on this, to be honest. I think uh, the, 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 what they've done now is that they've, they've changed fixtures and they've scrapped a load of games and it's not good for the fixture list. I think these League of Ireland players need to be playing in tournaments like this. And as Kenny said, um, not that long ago, there were never any Irish players in the under-21 squad. In this one, there were seven until Neil Farouge was ruled out injured yesterday. And um, I think Stephen Bradley, the Shamrock Rovers manager, he's been a little bit annoyed about it. He would be quite affected by it as well. Um, but I think so essentially what's happened is Kenny has called up players as his, his right to play for Ireland mm. at international level in the Toulon tournament. And because so many players are gone, a, a round of fixtures in the League of Ireland have been, have been postponed. Yeah, it's, I think it's more than that because I think Derry are now going to go six weeks without a home game um, when all things are added in. And um, they've, they've, I think it might even be two rounds of games. Um, okay. I, I should get clarity on that. But... Um, <coughs> You know, you have the likes of obviously Farouja, um, Dara Leahy, uh, Danny Mandreo, um, all these, uh, El Buzetti, all these players who've, who've um, made a bit of a, made some waves in the League of Ireland. And Kenny was probably annoyed about this when he was a coach for Dundalk himself. But I, I think League of Ireland players, they really, we need to have League of Ireland players in Ireland squads and I think we need to do our best for them. And so is this not a little bit of the league not fully understanding sometimes what's good for it? It just feels a little bit like the league are annoyed that its players are so good that they're playing for Ireland. Yeah, uh, I'd agree with you. I think Bradley's point is that this is effectively a friendly tournament. Um, but it's not. It's an international tournament of no, it's not. And it's significant it, prestige. It is. It's live on. It's live. It's live on TV, and they're taking on World uh, Olympic squads as well. A point that Kenny has made many times. Um, you know, you look at the likes of. Um, uh, the, the Liverpool centre back, whose name is Casey, you know, he's going to be let go from Liverpool. Um, the the lad from I think he's from Luke and Kildare direction. Uh, should what was that again? No, not not him actually. Uh, thanks for that. Show. the Irish lad. Uh, 
Masterson, Connor Masterson. So he's coming to a situation where he's coming into this squad and his future is like all over the place. He's a lad who was very close getting into I think he was in one Champions League squad for Liverpool or two. He was on the bench. Um, was on the bench and um, he's coming into this. This is a, a, a shop window for him if he's playing. And uh, it, it's a very important tournament. But the League of Ireland players, like it gives the League of Ireland a lot of kind of recognition as well that it's actually a league going places where you see all these players in the squad and you're like, who do they play for? Oh, Shamrock Rovers or UCD or whatever. And I'd be with Kenny on this, to be honest. I think, I think the FEI should be doing what's right for the players and um, giving them the opportunity. Yeah, no, 100% right. Uh, so there it is, Mircea Sarri kicking his cap. Uh, kicking up a fuss in Baku. Sarri storms out of Chelsea training session on EVA final. I did see some Arsenal fans with Mkhitaryan in the back of their shirt being stopped by the police in Baku. It was, um, you know, not a great look for football. Nothing happened. They weren't detained or anything. Um, so, I don't know. Definitely wasn't a good look, though. No. The other story in the front of that is Jeff Bezos' ex-wife. As then she's giving half of her 37 billion to charity. So that must be very annoying that, for Jeff Bezos. <laughs> That's all right. Um, Prendergast, optimistic Mad Moon will stay up some trip in the race and post. Kevin Prendergast at 86 years of age bidding for uh, Derby glory uh, on Saturday with Mad Moon. Uh, William McCreary did a great um, Kevin Prendergast impression at the uh, roadshow on Friday night. He was talking, he's, he's a great lad, he's often nosy though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was like, who's, who's that lad running? And then he obviously did the voice. It was like, I'm not telling you. He just wouldn't tell him. And then yeah. he, Prendergast rang him up half an hour later, said nothing, but I found out. And yeah. hung up. <laughs> he's, a, he's an absolute legend. Still, still uh, likes a few pints, um, likes to go fishing, and gets up every morning at literally the crack of dawn. If you ever do a stable tour with Kevin Prendergast, you, you're, you're there very, very early. I'm talking very early. I'd say there's good crack had on the gallops and the car, where they're all just, there's like a five minute period where they always come and. Smack yeah. talk each other and then go about their own ways. You could do uh, a beautiful documentary on a summer at the Curra, even a week at the Curra, just by following personalities like Frank Oaks. I remember one morning I did a piece in the Curra and I remember talking to Frank Oaks and he'd one horse in training at the time and he was telling me about how he rides him out and all that. He's 77 now, I think. Um, and he, I remember just all the different characters. You'd, you'd Dermot Well coming in with a battalion of horses and then you'd have the likes of Frank Oaks, you'd have all the people in between. I remember talking to Martin Brassel, he was telling me how they worked horse in the Curra that winter at minus 19 degrees, I think. Wow, yeah. It was one of the cold winters. And um, it's a real hub. And the, the Curra race course itself is in, in the news at the moment because there's it's just trying to um, finally, uh, I suppose, become that modern stadium that it, it should have been um, with teething problems and um, it shouldn't we shouldn't lose sight you're obviously from the area um, of how important the curry is in terms of a hub of activity and social life as well yeah it needs to reconnect with the, the locality and totally I think that's the type of thing that happens over a period of time mm. you can't force people to all of a sudden like something that hasn't been around as well as it should have been for years that I think that's a slowly slowly over the next couple of years is going to happen yeah it needs to happen though Ger. like you look at the you look at ball and robe um, the last couple of nights and the crowds that are getting there and the the the, the the, the real like feeling it it has in the local area where people really embrace Ball and Robe, going into County Galway, Sligo, Roscommon, they go racing there, but it's a real County Mayo track. Um, if ever you go there, Mayo football will always be talked about. The Curra should be a place that all the GA clubs in Kildare feel uh, that they should go to at least one day a year and have a day out there and yeah. bring bring people back from the community and don't be this kind of vaguely aloof place that um, caters for very rich people. Uh, here you go, Blue Thunder, Sari storms out as Chelsea prepare for big night. This is not the first time that Maurizio Sari has stormed out this season, but um, things worked out okay when he nearly left the last time in the penalty shootout. Europa League final, Chelsea versus Arsenal Olympic Stadium, Baku, 8pm. We'll talk about that in uh, just a little while with uh, Gary Breen this morning, and sorry, I should have opened this earlier, but it is the Irish Times sports section. Um, there's the front of it there. Road to recovery starts with doing nothing. That's the two weeks holidays, Gordon Darcy's, um, I mean, who's in the swimming pool in that picture? I can't actually see it there. So, Connacht players, Dominic Robertson, McCoy, Peter McCabe, Kyle Godwin, Matt Healy, and the Eddie Loken enjoying a recovery swim in Cape Town during the squad's visit to South Africa last November. So, obviously that's the, uh, um, sports people having a rest because that's what's happening at the moment and then the column here uh, from Dara O'Shea Dolly Gollum was common improving but unlike Mayo not real contenders yeah um, 
I, I, I think the, the Anthony Cunningham going back to Salt Hill narrative is fascinating altogether and uh, you know the, I, I, I was away at the weekend I only got to watch the Sunday game last night and um, some, some of the analysis was like absolute pantomime um, you know I think it's be, it's becoming you know are we are we actually analysing here or are we just becoming now I know it's been like this for a long time um, I thought Kieran Whelan did some very good stuff on Mayo Roscommon in terms of the kickouts and and all that but um this was just like I, I'm repeating my I'm repeating what Lowe's will have said here. This was classic Mayo, though. I mean, j you just look at the absolute mental failure in front of goal, like time and time again. The game that they should have won. Um, now, being Mayo, they'll probably end up in the Super Eights and end up losing to Dublin by a point or something like that. But um, Christ Almighty, like I, I thought, I thought this was I thought you know gone, win, yeah. I thought winning the league final at Crow Park would do something for them. I mean O'Connor's shot in front of goal, like that's that's just a mental breakdown. Like you can't you can't just slice a ball that badly wide. Um, the madness of the free kick then at the end, where it's kind of like there none of them really wants to Up take potato. it. Yeah. Um, and McLaughlin, who didn't have a particularly good game, then you could almost sense that he was going to miss. Um, but uh, oh, I don't know. Last one for you now is the Irish News, and this is a big story coming from Derry. Uh, Hassan steps down as Derry Treasurer. Derry County Board Treasurer Michael Hassan has resigned amid the county reportedly suffering from financial difficulties. Uh, he'd stepped in when he was approached after the failure to appoint a treasurer at the 2018 convention. He took the role after the previous role's incumbent, Liam Peoples, declined to run for the position again after two years in the job, and the previous incumbent had also cut short his term. You're supposed to do a five-year stint, but the last three guys have only done uh, two years apiece, and there's no suggestion of any wrongdoing reports. The Irish News this morning Morning. Uh, it's uh, Carol Kane on the part of Hassan Peoples or Brennan, but all had struggled to arrest the growing spending demands, and several sources have described the role as impossible. So, Larry GA, not going great off the pitch, even if uh, there are some green shoots of recovery on it.